Hey guys, my name is Justin and welcome to Hellsboro, where you care about the design behind designer luxury. And if you do too, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> okay, now that my vocal exercises are done, let's talk about the main event. And that main event is a bag review for the Loewe X Howl's Moving Castle Studio Ghibli collaboration, Moving Castle Pouch in leather, uh, more leather, uh, gold hardware, uh, and more leather. So, it's my baby. So uh, this past February, the uh, last of the trilogy of Studio Ghibli collaboration, <laughs> I don't know why I call it a trilogy. The last of the Studio Ghibli Loewe collaborations came out and it was Howl's Moving Castle. It had a beautiful, gigantic moving castle bag. There were several different like iconic Loewe bags attached to it to create this castle shape. It was a testament to the skills of the craftsmen of the Loewe house. That was like 12,000 euros, 16,000 US dollars. So not very possible for the normal person. But this bag came out kind of like parallel to it and it was not that crazy expensive. Like, yeah, it's a lot of money for what it is and for the size of it, but like for the amount of craftsmanship, you know, I think it was pretty good. I was lucky enough to get one of these. I have an amazing essay. Anna, if you're watching this, which you're, I know you're not still, that'd be really embarrassing if she was like, I found your YouTube. <laughs> But yeah, I was lucky enough to get this and now I wanted to share it with you and kind of give my thoughts on this bag. So if you're not familiar with my bag reviews, I look across five different categories, design, durability, comfort, investment value, and impact, kind of like visual impact, you know what I mean? Basically what I talk about is how the bag just exists factually, but also I tie in my experiences to help give that kind of like idea of like how it might work. And I know this was a limited collection and it's like limited edition, not like easily available anymore, but I still wanted to give a full review of this bag in case someone has the opportunity to buy one or if they just wanted to see what having this bag was like. Without further ado, let's jump on in. So the first category is design. First off, I have a first impression video of this where I go like super in depth of each and every aspect of this bag. I'll link it up in the corner in the description. Please take a look if you want to see like super like close up images with like a lot of descriptions because that's kind of where I like go through the whole thing. I even say like what fits in the bag. But then based on that video, you might think, okay, Justin, we get it. You're just easily this is going to get like a 10 out of 10. But I do have to say I have a few, I wouldn't call them complaints. But like, as much as I love the design of this bag, there are two things that keep me from like fully falling in love with this bag. Wait, three things. <laughs> I just thought of another. Number one is the strap. So the strap you might think is like just a normal strap. What's the big deal? But for me, this type of bag, I would feel much more comfortable with this bag as like a crossbody. I know I already have it at like the second one, but that's what ended up working out for me. But even at the longest length, it still is like way too short for me to put it as a crop crossbody. Like it sits here like under my boob and sticks out like that. So it <laughs> doesn't work out super great. But that being said, like it still is very useful. And I do think that the design of the strap, the fact that it's like, taken from a different bag, I think is very smart. Number two is the top. While it is beautiful, the way that the closure happens, there's no magnet, there's nothing. It just kind of like relies on like the suction and the form of the roundness of this pouch to kind of hold it into place. And it doesn't feel like super secure necessarily. So I would say that's also kind of like a little knock against it. But then lastly, what I want to talk about, and this is going to be very surprising, feet. Like, I love that there's feet. I think the design is amazing. It's hilarious. But then like, when I'm carrying this bag kind of like by the top handle where like, I will hold it just by like, the strap like that. When it was at the longest length, it was a little too long. And I thought the feet were like kind of like hitting the floor a little bit, which I was like, oh, that's gross. Um, but then shortening it, it became a non-issue, but still like the fact that they're dangling around, I'm finding it to be like fun, but you know, Fun and practical don't always go hand in hand. That being said, like those three things are such minor things because I would probably carry it on the shoulder half the time anyways. 
the way that I carry my bags, I have my hand on the strap like close to the lid anyways. And then like, I can't stay mad at these little feet. Like they're so cute. So in general, like the design, I think all of the aspects of the design, the craftsmanship, those three flaws I mentioned do not even scratch the surface at the design, really. So that's why like for the score, I, I still have to give it like a 9.5. So the next category is durability. If you've seen any of my like bag reviews for Loewe, I have a bag review playlist that I'll link if you like want to see more examples of like the quality and durability of different like Loewe bags. But I sing the praises of Loewe leather. I literally have never had like a bad experience with Loewe. I've mentioned before and I'll mention it again, I'm not particularly careful with bags. This one I'm a little bit more careful with, but I have definitely walked into a wall while wearing this already. Um, and I have yet to find any like scratches. You can see there's like a little bit of nicking like on the eye. That's where I walked into the wall. Across the body, like on the buffed calfskin, and even like on this like grained like mouthpiece on the hardware, there's sure like micro scratches, but that's just gonna happen on metal no matter what. And then even like, I feel like these little feet are so delicate, but there's not anything really visible in terms of like scratching. It's twerking. It's a structured bag, but it's not a very like hard bag. But still, like it's nice to carry, but then it somehow doesn't scratch super easily. I'm not scared of carrying this bag, I think is also like a testament to the quality. For durability, this bag is gonna get a nine. And now the next category is comfort. I kind of mentioned these points before. Carrying this bag, there's really two options, and one of them I would say is not even like a really like really real option, but it's mostly gonna be shoulder, or sometimes like I turn it into like a top handle where I like loop my hand like this. And it is kind of nice because like it turns out there's maybe like a few inches before like the ground. So it kind of looks like he's walking with me, which I think is super cute. But I do wish there was another way to carry this bag. I think it would just make it even more perfect. I would almost forget I was carrying a bag in a way, you know? I know I could probably get like some sort of like longer strap from Loewe or something like that, but it's just not high on my priority list now because I am still satisfied with carrying it, even though it's not my most comfortable. I'm not saying it's my least comfortable, but it's not my most comfortable. And on the other side of comfort, I know I talked about like the cap just opening and closing by suction. And that is probably my least favorite thing about the bag. You have to be a bit more careful. Like I probably wouldn't take this to like a super touristy area just because I don't want to get like pickpocketed because it is quite easy to open. And like I said, it's like easy to notice, but like pickpockets are like so good that I'm sure they'd be able to get in and out in a second without you noticing, right? And like if there's just something else, like a magnet or something to like signify it being open like i think that would just make it feel a lot more secure i haven't had any issues with it knock on wood but that being said i do live in sweden and it's like generally safe and there's not too many threats of like that kind of like crime maybe i'm not the best judge for that like for sure it's not my favorite bag to carry because it's not the most comfortable both physically or like safety mentally so for that reason i'm gonna give it a six and a half I'm sorry. The next category is my least favorite category, and that is investment value. I said I once, I'm gonna say it again, I do not believe we should be buying bags to later resell them. I understand if like your taste changed or you just end up not using the bag and you wanna get rid of it, by all means, I totally get that. That being said, I do think it's important to bring up. Specifically when I'm talking about these like limited edition collections, I do think that's where as long as you take good care of the bag, even if it's like lightly used, you can still get the MSRP that you paid for it. And maybe even a little bit more. This bag, especially because it is like quite the rare one. I did see on eBay that someone was trying to sell one, but they were trying to sell it for like two or three times the price. I was like, okay, you need to chill out. But even if I use this for like a few years, for some reason, like I hate bags or something and I just like want to sell it, I don't, for some, you know, whatever fake reason, I'm pretty sure I would be able to at least get like what I paid for this. Especially if I like take it to the US because it was more expensive there. <laughs> Any of these like standout bags from limited edition collections, honestly, time after time, you will find me giving it a 10. 
All right, and then the last category is impact. This bag, this bag right here, the one that I'm holding, this goofy thing, if we're talking about visual impact, you can see what it is. It's a very, it's an outstanding bag. Even if you don't know about the craftsmanship, like the artistry that went into creating this bag and putting it together, you still see it's a little, it's a funny little guy. It's just a silly little guy with little dangly, spindly legs who's ready to like walk around and take over the world. You know, that drives up the visual impact immediately. But the fact that like, I have been approached a couple of times about this bag. One of them I would say maybe doesn't count. <laughs> because I was in a Loewe store and like the sales associate was like, oh my God, I didn't even see this. We didn't even get this bag, blah, blah, blah. But then there was even someone in the store who was like, oh my gosh, you have the moving castle pouch. And like, she was like gushing over it. And then I was like, do you, want, do you want to hold it? You can try it on. So she was like, oh my gosh, is that okay? And then she did that. And then she was like, oh, can you take a picture of it? And I was like, yeah, of course. Just the fact I've literally never had someone come up to me and like, oh my God, can I take a picture with your bag? Like to me, that is insane. Like I have some bags that have caught attention before, like the whatever Ikea bag and the Gucci hourglass, like all these things, they got attention. They went viral, whatever. No one's ever asked me to take a picture with any of my bags ever, except this one. I think that's amazing. I think it's super cute. And it was like just a really nice experience to be able to share this with someone in a way. That's what I love about fashion. Like people are very passionate about it. And even if they don't get to own it, but they get to experience it in some way, it's a little bit of magic for me. Just that story alone, but on top of that, the fact that it is just like a, a little goofy little guy, that gives this for impact 10, 10, 10, 10. All right, so then looking at the score all together, that gives us a 45 out of 50, which gives us like a very, like an A minus basically. And honestly, I think, I think that makes sense actually. I think if there was like a better strap handle situation, there was like a little bit of a closure here. Honestly, I think the score would have been pretty much as close to a perfect score as I would have ever gotten it. But it's just those two things I think that kind of like keep me from like saying like, yeah, this bag's perfect. But I'm not very surprised by the score. I figured it would be like somewhere in like the low A's, middle A, maybe even like a high B, but like... <laughs> this is gonna sound really stupid, but I'm like honored to be able to like own this kind of thing. It's a movie I love. It's a brand I love. So it's, it's the marriage of something perfect. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Do you think this bag deserved a better score? Let me look at that face and that ugly little face. <laughs> Do you think it like needs to die in a fire because of how ugly it is? If you say that, this bag is going to come and haunt you, so. But yeah, that is all I have for you today. So if you like this video, please make sure to like, subscribe. It lets me know that you like this kind of content and that you too care about the design behind Designer Luxury. Until next time, He's dancing to say goodbye. Oh yeah. It's twerking. <laughs>